what if what if we had the ability the ability to step back in time and see the past unfold before our very eyes the people that once walked the same streets as us the streets have now been demolished pulled back to how they once were roaming around an era ghost like seeing just how they did it how they lived how they survived listening to their story Within the city of Manchester lies a tranquil, peaceful park named Angel Meadow. It offers its beauty for all to admire, but behind the autumnal leaves and enchanted charm masks an image of unimaginable horror. Ladies and gents, let's step back into Victorian, into Victorian Manchester. Manchester. Testing the entrance to the wonderful. Forget your picturesque postcards of Victorian streets with the cat by the coal fire and the snow falling elegantly onto the cobbles. This was industrial Manchester. Manchester. Hey, watch hey, where you're going. An angel meadow was a place you could only have ever imagined in your darkest nightmares. <laughs> Overcrowding on an unprecedented scale due to the immigrants seeking work during the Industrial Revolution. Starvation, mass poverty and death was staring into the soul of every living Mancunian. The poorest of families scraping a living and surviving on absolute bare minimum Mams and dads trying to provide for their families, but making next to no money at all. Babies and children dying from disease and infection and cholera was plaguing the city and at the forefront of everyone's mind come morning, noon and night. Back to back terraced houses, one brick thick. Families huddled together, freezing in one bed, shielding themselves from the cold wind that howled ferociously as it eased itself through the cracks and crevices of each house brick in the dead of night. Poor children, never experiencing a good night's sleep. Dealing with not just the cold, but having to fight off a bed infested with bed bugs, <coughs> nipping, biting, constantly throughout the night. The sewage system was completely inadequate to deal with the amount of humans in one spot, and it wasn't long before the cellar dwellings began to fill 
with human waste. The smog and smoke that roared from the Victorian chimneys. Coating the city's famous red brick factories and buildings. A satanic looking black. And filling the lungs of all in its path. <coughs> streets inhabited with prostitutes, thieves, and the outcasts of society. Get me in here. Drunkards stumbling from the wretched hovels and drinking dens, settling the disputes on the blood-splattered cobbles of Victorian Manchester. Hag like women in the shawls, skulking around the alleys and crevices in the maze like labyrinth of Irk Street and Aspen Lane. Nimble fingered, streetwise scuttler children <laughs> congregating on the street corners, smoking with the peaked hats and clog shoes, patrolling the cobbles and scanning the crowd with the hawk eyes, awaiting to pounce on the rich and wealthy. Hey Tommy, Tommy. him over there with a the top hat. To pickpocket, to scam, and to thieve. This was their only known way to survive, and fill the void of the poor empty stomachs. But the most shocking fact about Angel Meadows past is sadly still to come. It's estimated 40,000 people are mass buried on this now peaceful piece of land. Paupers. People. The coffins made chiefly and piled on top of each other, almost on an industrial scale. No names and no trace of who these people were what they did, what they was like, but they had a purpose on this planet, and they existed, their lives meant something to someone, just like you and me. glorious day because this is actually a sunny day in Manchester um, I'm absolutely drenched I'm soaked but I just wanted to bring you into this park so you could see it for yourselves because it's hard to imagine how there could be so much carnage and pain and horror in one little spot and you would have never have known it when you're walking through this park you wouldn't know unless you know you read some of the boards with, about the history and stuff but I find it really fascinating and I cannot comprehend how hard it must have been for these people to just survive alone um, you know the, this this whole area around me now would have been filled with uh, factories and buildings bellowing smoke out and you know it, on top of all that you had the scuttlers the scuttling <laughs> gangs of Manchester rain terror they absolutely terrorized the streets on top of the prostitution on top of the thieves, on top of the, the drunks that were fighting in and out of the pubs. And I just find it so hard to, to get my head round that it happened on the ground that I'm walking on now. It's amazing, it's, it's sort of, it's fascinating but in a very sinister way. And I'm sorry if you can't really hear me because the, the rain's really bouncing down and it's quite loud, there's construction going on. The camera seems to be fogging up a little. But today, where I stand is this tranquil little park and obviously below my feet there's 40,000 poor souls that are just sort of buried a mass burial um, and I've seen people in this park in the summer having picnics and stuff like that and I just I don't know something goes against the grain with me 
because I think it should be remembered as a burial park as opposed to a um, you know an actual park and these buildings that they're throwing up behind me now they're actually um, I've just been reading some of the information and they're actually saying that it overlooks this beautiful tranquil park and yeah they're right but they have no idea they've sort of left out the 40,000 poor souls that are buried here and I've just spotted something in the park as well and it sort of hit home a little bit because no matter how much you mask um, mask it with trees and beauty history has a way of rearing its face from time to time and it's sad but it's also special in a way and I'll just show it you now so here we have this beautiful tree and if I just pan you down to the floor I've just noticed, noticed this peeking through now sometimes this tree like I say can rear its face but look at this this is an old old headstone and I can only presume the force of the root of this tree I sort of pushed this up over the years out of the ground and it says I think that says resteth it's an old Victorian or Georgian term for for rest I could be wrong but I think it is off the top of my head and it says Thomas something Thomas W-I-D um, January 27 1801 of his age and something else but how sad's that you know it's special in a way because it's sort of poked up and give us a little wave ain't it but that's just one of many poor souls that are actually buried in this park you know that's just one of them and there's 40,000 that are, we don't even know who they are you know what I mean it's absolutely it's so so sad right so just a quick one uh, sorry about the wobbly camera I'm holding it with my hand at the minute um, I'm on Corporation Street and that ran at the side of sort of Angel Meadow now this area now there's like um, see the arches behind me here and then there's a train actually going over at the minute but this area was back to back terraced houses there's possibly three four hundred I think houses if I can remember correctly just in this vicinity alone and um, I saw this photograph and you could see all these streets I'll try and put it in somehow and you could see all these streets and there was one pump which produced some sort of like cleanish water when you say it was clean cleanish it was probably filth and we wouldn't drink it today but that was their only sort of way of getting any type of water um, and there was one privy for, for like 300 houses and it's bizarre because it was right here where they are now um, and it's being renovated this area at the minute and I know that when they've dug these um, the foundations they've found loads of old stuff from their houses they found the bedpans and cutlery and stuff like that it's absolutely so so rich in history um, and these were the people that sort of walked the streets before us you know what I mean these were I got nothing but as horrible as it as things might have been it, I respect their um, their adversity and I respect how hard it must have been but they got on with things do you know what I mean I respect the hardship that they went through <coughs> Here we go again, happy as can be, all good friends and jolly company. And our lads and back! Oh, bleeding hell, look who the cast dragged in. Charlie, back again, eh? Third time today you've been in here. Third time lucky, Tommy. Lady Luck's been with me today. I've just relieved an outsider of his valuables, let's say. Been on the rob again, have you, Charlie boy? Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? How dare you slander my good name, Bar Steward. Okay, okay, you've got me. Go on then, what have you robbed? I didn't rob, it's relieved. Okay, okay, relieved then. Well... You know, the usual, these books. No good to me, though. Can't read. 
this little check here that I'll get my mate Panny the Devil to cash for me later. And this. <laughs> I want it. Jackpot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pass us that piece of paper there. It's got the fella's name on that you've robbed. Let's have a look then. I'll read it to you. It's uh, a Mr. Frederick Engels. Engels? That's a weird name, isn't it? Must be Welsh. Anyway, a pint of your finest noggin, please, my good man. <coughs> and here, that's for the polyphon. <coughs> With conditions the way they were back in Victorian Manchester, it was no surprise that the majority of these people spent many of their hours staring down the dimple glass jar of a pint of ale. After all, who could blame them? It was cleaner than drinking the disease riddled water from the street pump that posed so many health hazards typhoid and diarrhea, just to name a few. On every street corner, there was a pub, and some of these places were decent drinking establishments, filled with your hard-working factory workers and navvies. But on the other hand, some of these pubs were filled with the most unscrupulous of characters that you could ever imagine. They were described more as drinking dens or hovels, as opposed to an actual pub. These places were dirty, dingy, full of the dregs and misfits of society. Thieves, muggers, urglers, con artists, prostitutes and violent alcoholics of Manchester's deep, dark underworld. And the evening's entertainment wouldn't have been complete without a good old punch up on the cobbles. As prize fighters and tough men from all over the city would meet for the fisticuffs in the cellars of these drinking dens, all for the pleasure of the bloodthirsty drunken punters in a winner takes all dust up. And for some of these fighters, it was their only way of income. Literally fighting to survive. to survive. Right, so it's just literally stopped raining. But the heavens could open up on me at any second. So I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet down here. Um, now, I'm on Richmond Street. It was notorious, this street, for housing one of Manchester's, if not... Manchester's worst pub. Um, it was even classed as drink as a drinking den as opposed to a pub. Um, it would have been so dingy, possibly just candle lit. But it was how it was. It was um, occupied by these people that were the most unscrupulous of characters. You're talking your criminals, your thieves, your muggers, possibly murderers, um, prostitutes. Your real cloak and dagger type characters, and they would have they would have been round there. Now the pub was called the dog and rat. Now how intimidating does that sound? Um, and I find it fascinating. These pubs opened at four in the morning and they closed at one o'clock in the morning the next day. So they was open for 21 hours of the day. And in Manchester today, there's around 600 to 650 sort of bars and pubs. Back in the Victorian Manchester, it was apparently recorded at over 2000. So, you know, you can just imagine what these streets were like. They would have been filled with, um, <laughs> it would have just been absolute carnage. There'd have been rats running around and, ev and everything. Um, but like I say, it was it was notorious for its drinking dens and, and the worst possible kind. Now, there's a story about this pub that the owner of the pub put the price of beer up 
And the reason that these criminals all paid a little bit extra is because if one of them would have gone out and um, robbed somebody, for example, and then he was being chased by the guy that he just robbed, he'd run into the pub and he knew that everybody in that pub would have his back. And this sort of poor guy would run in after he's just been robbed and they'd all fill him in. As horrible as it sounds, but these all stuck together as one big click. So the sort of landlord put the price of beer up, um, a sort of tax really, as a bit of way of saying it's a sort of protection money. Now you'd think that they wouldn't pay extra back in the day for um, the beer, but they did in this one pub. And it's, it's fascinating that it actually took place on this street that I'm, on, that I'm actually on today. And like I say, I'm just strolling down it. There's indentations everywhere you look of um, sort of the old, there's old little remnants here and there. You can look at one of the walls or down one of the streets and there's pieces of history that are still here from that actual era. And it, it blows my mind, it really does. It was a well-known fact that the beer was cleaner to drink than the tap water out of the street pump. Hence why the legal age of drinking was so low in the pubs and alehouses. But this was a recipe for disaster. As the crime rate was through the roof. Streets filled with drunkards, intoxicated beyond belief. <laughs> generation of street children following in the footsteps of their alcoholic parents. A continuous cycle of chaos. Walking down the streets of Manchester, you would have encountered characters such as one-eyed Annie Keller, a drunkard prostitute with over 69 convictions to her name. Paddy Cox, a.k.a. Paddy Paddy Devil. Look at me! You're completely mistaken! A master fraudster and counterfeiter. Big Ben Keats. What are you looking at, sunshine? Convicted of violent assaults, theft, and highway robbery, just to name a few. The notorious Bill Brooks. Say, get off me! Head boy of the Green Gate Scuttlers. He was well known for his street fighting around the Salford and Manchester area. He was fearless, calculated, and a true product of his environment. Say, get off me! But inevitably, most of these criminals ended up at the big house. Strange, Strange ways, ways. Prison. prison. A place that even to this day sends a shiver down the spine of many. Hard labour was a typical punishment that was dished out to criminals of all sorts. Punishments such as the dreaded treadmill, also known as the everlasting, everlasting staircase. staircase. No, that, it was introduced in 1818 by Sir William Cubitt as a means of putting convicts to good use. The device was a wide hollow cylinder, composed of wooden steps, built around an iron frame, designed to allow up to 40 convicts to use in one city. As the device began to rotate, each prisoner was forced to continuously step forward along a series of wooden planks, the power generated by the tread wheel was typically used to pump water or mill corn. Not only was this an exhausting punishment, but it also had a psychological effect on the individual, as to some it seemed an endless and pointless task, causing some people to lose their minds or collapse with sheer exhaustion.
history. It's a funny old thing, isn't it? And just because we can't see it, doesn't mean it didn't exist. But from time to time, history can show its face. If only for a little while. And I've just spotted something in the park as well. Before Mother Nature reclaims what's rightfully hers. But spotting the headstone, peeking through the mud and autumnal leaves that day in Angel Meadow, felt like it was meant to be seen. And its story had to be told. As if it offered itself to us as a gift. A, gift. a connection from their era to ours. A glimpse of the past, of what was once here. The people, mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters. Sons and daughters of the city, never to be forgotten. Fascinating, interesting, mysterious, wonderful. But that's only the beginning. Men were saying it this afternoon who was taking it. Suddenly you notice. But there are these separations. If we're not on a separate island shouting across to somebody else and trying to hear up their saying and misunderstanding, you know, you use the word yourself, empathy. These things flowing underneath, we're parts of a single continent. It meets underneath the water.